All right, in order to, um, in order to really kind of make this thing um, calibrate correctly, right, um, we're in a position right now where, say, our civil engineer gave us this CAD plan, and uh, we need to make it look right. So we have a bunch of lines um, that came in, and uh, I have thick lines on right now, so you can see that everything is kind of rendering as the same thickness. Um, the hatches are all, you know, black, not gray. So there are a bunch of things that we need to consider here um, as we, and where's that hatch? Oh, anyway, it should be there. Um, anyway, so, uh, so what we have to do is, um, is basically change the hatches through a couple of uh, different methods. So we have, we have one method, which is let's just change the visibility settings of everything in this view, which could be all right. Um, or we could change the visibility settings of all of the elements in this CAD file per a view template, which we could then apply to other views should we choose. So, um, well, first, let's get to a bigger scale. So I'm going to increase this scale to will a quarter inch be too big? Yeah. Um, no, eighth is like really small. Yeah, let's do three sixteenths. I don't like to use sixteenth inch scales if I can avoid it. But um, anyway, so all right. <clears throat> so uh, let's use a view template. Um, activate the view. Scroll down to view template and click none. And uh, we could theoretically click on site plan, but what I'm going to do is duplicate site plan. I'm going to call this arc site plan. Just arc because I'm just saying like that's the one we made. Um, so when you guys get in an office, uh, a smart office will have these set up. Um, and I'm not saying other offices are dumb. I'm just saying like, a smart office is taking advantage of, of the, the standardization of certain view types in order to give you a, a sort of launch pad to get to a good looking view in the snap of a finger. So um, we're going to set this up specific to our site plan. Okay, so, um, and I just mean the CAD file. Okay, so we haven't worked with the checkboxes on the right hand side yet very much. Um, but basically, you can use this as like a filtering process that allows you to click it on and change a particular element or category in that view. And then you can click it off and then there are no elements that are modified in that view. Okay, so, uh, or no, no uh, elements that are being applied um, via a, a view template. Okay, so that's, I mean, but these all have to be calibrated, but basically this particular one, um, I'm gonna call, or, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's just let's just format the whole thing. But uh, basically, I, what I was just saying is, if we unchecked everything except for, and I'm just doing this theoretically, right? If we unchecked everything except for the um, import overrides, then we theoretically could apply this to this view, and it would just modify the CAD file and nothing else. Does that make sense? So anyway, but we do want to modify some of these. We'll set some of them. Um, but first and foremost, we've got uh, the view scale. I'm going to switch that to 3 sixteenths. Detail level, we'll put it on fine. Parts visibility is fine. Um, leave the BG overrides for model categories on for now. We'll probably turn some off. In fact, I will turn some off. I'm going to turn grids off. Uh, grids under annotation categories. Okay, analytical is fine. Um, import will modify in a second. Model display should be fine. Everything else here should be fine as a default. Um, so let's go back into VG overrides for imports. And uh, you should know, <coughs> sorry, you should notice now that there's another category here. The other category is our floor plan. Okay, this is our floor plan CAD file. And if we hit this little plus button, you'll see that all of our layers now show up here in Revit. So um, what we have to do is modify these layers so that um, it fits what we want it to do in our model. Okay, so now that I've got it located in, in the position I want it to be in, um, the first thing I want to do is turn off every layer that isn't 
modified specifically by me or created specifically by me. So I selected everything that was the uh, background that I exported into CAD. So that duplicate floor plan will no longer show. All we have are the site elements that I generated. Okay, um, and then I'm just going to use a couple of things as um, sort of a, uh, I guess, uh, uh, an illustrator, and then I'll let you guys kind of populate the rest of it the way you see fit. But first and foremost, I'm going to start with the property line. Property lines are always going to be a very, very thick phantom line. So you can go to projection and you can override this. You can choose a weight of like 8, 9 or 10, something like that. Um, you could leave it black or just no override will keep it black. Um, and the pattern here, you'll scroll down to... Do we not have the phantom lines loaded? What? Oh, here it is. Uh, double dash, and you could do 3 eighths or 5 eighths. Let's just stick with 3 eighths for now. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK, hit OK, and then zoom in on it, and you'll see that that actually shows up now as a phantom line. Make, making sense? Okay, so there are a couple other things that I want to do just to um, get this thing breathing, you know, breathe some life into this thing. Um, the wall elements, the CMU retaining walls that are on site, those are three-dimensional volumetric elements. So what are they going to look like compared to other flat elements on the site? Anybody? Just describe what the CMU wall lines are going to look like. So there are various types of elements that are going to be on our site plan. We have some that are sort of, you know, planar with the ground, like the concrete, like this. And then we have other elements that are popping up off of the ground, like CMU walls, retaining walls. So how are we going to graphically show those walls? Thicker lines, yeah. So um, let's go back into the template, back into import. Uh, open up our categories here and let's go to site retaining wall and for this one all we have to do is modify the weight of the line so I'll switch it to a 5 to get started with. Um, the other things that I want to do here are um, changing just a few uh, types of elements. So um, anything that is a uh, you know the concrete deck, concrete A, um, concrete B and uh, the concrete deck, or wood deck rather, those I'm just going to leave as the default thin black line, you know, whatever, no big deal. But all of the hatches, on the other hand, I'm actually like not happy with the fact that they show up as kind of this uh, black color. So I'm going to change those. Um, so let's go to site concrete A hatch. And uh, this one, I'm actually going to change the color to be gray. And I'm going to even lighten it a little more, something like that. Um, and I want to change the um, pattern override. Oh, that's that's a line override. Hang on. How come you can't change the pattern here? That's a hatch pattern. How come you change, can't change that? Huh. No. That's weird. Um, huh. I wonder if I've never done that before now. All right, well, anyway. Um, so let's just stick with the retaining walls being thicker then. And uh, let's slightly thicken the edge of the um, concrete. So we'll just change these to be something like a three. Like, uh, all right, yeah, we'll do that a three. Concrete B, we'll make that a three. And the wood deck will make that a three. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. There. So um, it's pretty subtle just because at the scale of this drawing, it's coming through pretty thick, but uh, or it's not coming through super thick when you're zoomed out. But when you're zoomed in, you can see that the retaining walls are showing up fairly thick. They really pop out. And the edge of the concrete is showing up thicker than something like a mo strip, for instance, like on, well, that's actually the building. But uh, they're showing up thicker than some other, you know, elements on site. Okay? 
So uh, I gotta figure out this hatch thing. I swear to God that you can do that somehow, but now I'm blanking and thinking I just didn't used to do it a different way. So um, the other thing that I want you guys to turn off is this little thing, um, project base point and the survey point. Um, you could do that just by using the element hide, uh, or you could do that right in your site plan um, view template as well. Those I believe are model categories. You scroll down to site and open up site and it's a sub element. Survey point, project base point, turn those off, hit OK, and that'll disappear. Um, yeah, I gotta look into this hatch thing. Okay, uh, any questions for now? Okay. Alright, let me find out what's going on with this hatch.